Hello everyone and welcome into today's video. Are you ready to watch a movie with me? Because I am ready to watch a movie with you and today we are checking out Rain Man from 1988. If you've been here before, welcome back to the channel. It's so good to see you again and if you've never seen me before, my name is KL and this corner of the internet is where I watch movies that I've never seen before and I let you know what I thought of them. I think compared to the average person, I really haven't seen that many movies so I feel like I'm playing catch up and thank you for joining me along for the ride. This is so much fun and I can't wait to watch more movies. The sun is really going in and out of clouds and that is having a drastic effect on the room. So apologies. <laughs> Before I talk about Rain Man and get into it, I do just want to have a quick catch up with you all because it has been over a month since my last video went out on the channel and that was not intentional and I feel really bad about it. July was both an incredible month for me and a stressful month for me. And I feel like my brain entered vacation mode for the entire month instead of just the week that I actually was on vacation and that was not really fun to deal with. I feel like I'm not the only one that struggles with this so please let me know in the comments if you are like me when it comes to this but for me I really struggle in the heat to be happy to be productive and to be motivated and that really hit me hard last month because we had some brutally hot temperatures here and this room is the hottest room in my house which doesn't help either. I just find it really hard to start things. I find it really hard to just do things in general. I find it really difficult to complete stuff and I just really struggled with that a lot last month and it was not a good time. So needless to say, I'm very excited for fall to get here. Fall is my favorite season out of all of the seasons and I am so excited for temperatures to cool off. We already are experiencing cooler mornings and evenings here where I live, which is amazing. And I'm very grateful that summers here are nice and short. Don't get me wrong, I do love warm weather, I do love the sun, I do love summer, but I can only handle it in small doses and I can't deal with like the unbearable heat, which I feel like we're getting more and more and more of that every single year. Ella, they can't see you, honey. You gotta, you gotta just lift your head up a little bit more. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> this is Ella. <laughs> She says hello. If you want to see a lot more Ella, make sure you follow me on my Instagram, instagram.com slash KL. Anyway, the vacation I went on last month was amazing. For those of you that don't follow me on my socials or check the community tab here on my channel, I went out to Ontario for a whole week to spend time with my best friends. We all traveled from all over North America to spend a week on the beach, eating good food, playing games, vegging out. It was wonderful. This group of friends, we met for the first time in person back in November, so it was really good to hang out again, and I miss them dearly, and I kind of wish I was still out there. If you have also gone on vacation over the last little bit, please let me know in the comments. Where did you go? What did you do? This includes staycations. I love staycations, so if you have taken time off to just veg out at home, let me know what you did. Did you watch any good movies? Did you play games? Did you get any housework done? Let me know. All right, let's talk about Rain Man quickly. So this was a suggestion from one of my patrons over on Patreon. They made this suggestion many months ago. I put it into a poll that I ran at the beginning of June. Now the winner of that poll was The Prestige and I already have watched and reacted to that. It is on my channel and it was such a good movie. However, I couldn't ignore the amount of votes that Rain Man got and you can clearly see that over here. Rain Man had a ton of votes so I let my patrons know that I would commit to watching it and reacting to it so that is what we're here today to do. As for what I know about the movie, nothing. I know that it stars Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise but I did not look at the rest of the cast. I did not watch the trailer. I did not read the synopsis about the plot. So I don't know what this is about. Based on the title, Rain Man, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if there was like a weather involvement in the story because of the name of the movie, but I also don't want to just like blanket assume that that's what's gonna happen, I guess. I don't know. The title for me does not really give me any guidance about what the story is going to be about. Knowing so little is kind of my preference anyway for going into movies, so you can kind of expect that for the most part moving forward with movies. Obviously there are moments cut out of this edit, so if you are a person that likes to watch every possible reaction moment that I had, you will want to check that out over on my Patreon. That is where I offer the full length uncut reactions to movies. You do need your own copy of the movie to watch along with me. And if you are interested in voting on what I watch on the channel in the future, that is also over on Patreon. My lowest tier is $2 Canadian per month, so it is very affordable to join the community over there and it is the best way to support me in what I do here on the channel. All right, I think that's all that I had to ramble about in this intro, so with that, it is time to press play.
I love when movies just jump right into letting you know the main actor is the movie title before anything happens. Where is this car going? My grandma and your grandma by the fire. It's been so long since I've heard this song. <laughs> Hans Zimmer, no way. Oh my gosh. That's a nice surprise. Now, I told you I've never dealt with these Lamborghinis before, and yet you assured me that you could deliver these cars within that time frame. Okay, so I assume that his character was buying the car. Seems like this is just his job. Also, can we just talk about how headsets like this have like not changed since 1988? <laughs> I literally had a headset just like that in my last job that I left in 2020. <laughs> come on, come on, I need this. Come on. I would be stressed working under him. Uh, Mr. Bateman, uh, that was Mr. Babbitt on the other line. I just noticed I didn't put captions on and I was like, I was struggling to understand what was happening. This is why I watch with subtitles because my ears don't work properly if I don't. <laughs> Charlie, you still want to go with all these problems? Hey, we're seconds away from closing this deal, clearing what? 75 grand. Not bad for a couple of phone calls, huh? It's a lot of money, especially back then. Okay, you want to talk? Let's talk. How was I your day? I want to talk. A, I feel no, like you're talk. excluding me from what's going on. Charlie, this is Lenny. I've been trying to contact you for a while. Your father has died, Charlie. Charlie? Uh-huh. I'm sorry, the funeral's tomorrow in Cincinnati. He said you'd know where. I've got his number. That's not necessary. Not close with his dad, I guess, then. Look, I told you before, we had a falling out a long time ago. Hmm. My mother died when I was two. It was just him and me. We, you know, we, just, we just didn't get along. Let us consecrate ourselves to follow his... Is that the lawyer? Just have to go over the details of the will with him tonight. And then we're out of here. It's a nice house. Hmm. Nice car. Knew this car my whole life. Only drove it once. It's a 1949 Buick Roadmaster convertible. My first car was a Buick, a 92 Buick. You were his only child. You came along when he was, what, 45 or something? Probably though he was never going to have a son. So he had to love you. I mean, you should love your children anyway. The car was off limits to me. That's a class geat say it commands respect. 10th grade, I'm 16 years old, and for once, I bring home a report card, and it's almost all A's. I go to my old man, can I take the car out? He says no. I take it anyway, I steal the keys, I sneak it out. You know, nothing I did was good enough for this guy. Don't you understand that? We're on Columbia Parkway, we get pulled over. He called in a report of a stolen car. Central Station, the other guy's dad's bail him out in an hour. He left me there two days. Whoa. Left home, I never saw him again. Charlie, after a year we've been together, this is the first time I've heard this story. Susanna, did you never ask him about his family? Rain Man would come and sing to me. The whole year that you were together? You know, one of those imaginary childhood friends. Oh, so that's the origin of Rain Man, imaginary friend. But your failure to write, to telephone, to re-enter my life in any way has left me without a son. I wish you all I ever wanted for you. I wish you the best. Did his dad never try to reach out at all? That certain Buick convertible, the very car that unfortunately brought our relationship to an end. Also, outright title to my prize-winning hybrid rose bushes. <laughs> As for my home and all other property, real and personal, these shall be placed in trust. It means that the estate, in excess of $3 million after expenses and taxes, will go into a trust fund for a beneficiary to be named in this document. Who, who is that? Who, no, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Beneficiary, he got $3 million, but he didn't get the rose bushes. I got the rose bushes. I definitely got the rose bushes. Charles. There is a hell, sir. My father's in it, and he is looking up right now, and he, he is laughing his ass off. Did you hear that letter? Were you listening? Yes, sir, I was. Were you? No. Could you repeat it? Because I, I can't <laughs> believe my fucking ears. Yeah, I feel like you can't be too upset about not getting an inheritance when you willingly did not have a relationship with said person that's leaving an inheritance. So it's like just because your family doesn't mean that you are automatically granted priority for things like that. Yes, I think you can. I have a problem with a private trust. Oh, boy. Dr. Brenner is still in conference. Would you like to wait in his outer office? No, we'll stay here. Did he find out who the beneficiary was? Did the bank really disclose that private information that he had no right of knowing? And now he is going after the person that is the beneficiary, which I assume is going to be Dustin Hoffman and the character that he plays. That's just my guess. Whatever this is, I don't understand the point of secrecy. I mean, look, I'm trustee of the fund, but this hospital receives nothing from that. Oh, 
the trustee. Okay. I took on this burden out of loyalty to your father. That's where my loyalty ends. I think you feel cheated out of your birthright. I, I, I always drive the car on Saturday, never drive on Monday. What is this? Who is this guy? And then when she jumped into the car. Well, there's Dustin Hoffman. Raymond? He says he drives this car. Dad lets me drive slow on the driveway every Saturday. Of course, the seats were originally brown leather. Now they're pitiful red. You know this car? I know this car. Dad lets me drive slow on the driveway, but not on Monday. Definitely not on Monday. Who's your dad? Sanford Babbitt. Sanford Babbitt? 10961 Beechcrest Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. Who's your mother? Eleanor Babbitt. Eleanor? Died January 5th, 1965 after a short... Who the hell are illness. you? Did his dad never tell him about him? Ever? That, like, breaks my heart. Who is this guy? Raymond is your brother. Whoa. My brother? I, I don't have a brother. That's so heartbreaking. It's like they just put Raymond in here and, like, well, I don't... Obviously, it wasn't forgotten about, because... Not exactly. He's not crazy, he's not right, but he's here. Well, he's an autistic savant. Oh, I know it's the time of the movie and when it was made, but it's so painful to hear the R word. Ugh. Well, Raymond has a problem communicating and learning. He can't even express himself or probably even understand his own emotions in a traditional way. Routines, rituals, it's uh, all he has to protect himself. Yeah. Any break in the routines, and it's terrifying. How long has he been here? Well, let's see, I came here in 1960. Now, how old is he? I was almost three years old, and you knew he had a brother. You knew I was his brother. Because why didn't anybody tell me I had a brother? What would you have done about it? Visited him? Had some kind of a connection or relationship with him? He just inherited three million dollars. He doesn't understand the concept of money. What are you asking me for? What I is this? Why is he doing that? Who's on first? Whenever he gets nervous, he does who's on first. Oh, yeah. Reads and remembers whatever he gets his Burn. hands on. Paul. Oh. Oh, 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 Vern, beat your hand. You like Shakespeare, Ray? I don't know. <laughs> Did you read all this? I don't know. You don't know? Vern. Did you read Macbeth? I don't know, Vern. Stop. <sighs> Am I going to end up, like, disliking Tom's character? <laughs> my main man, Vern. It's okay, Ray. Yeah. My main man. Yeah, my main man. Touched him before he pulled away. Nah, don't take it personal. You never touched me. I'm closer to him than anybody in the world. Know him for nine years. It's not in him. Why do I have to take the car and go down there and wait for you again at the gate? I've been waiting for you for days. No. So then it needs to be a little bit more supportive. Like, he literally just found out he had a brother. <laughs> Listen, my father died. You know that he died last week? Did they tell you that? I don't know. You don't know if they told you or you don't know what dead is? That means he's, he's gone. He's not with us anymore. He's at the cemetery. You want to wanna go see him at the cemetery, Ray? I don't know. You know, I live in Los Angeles. I thought maybe you go to Los Angeles like to see a Dodger game go... Today's an off day. Oh, we don't have to go today. I can't tell if he's like genuinely wanting to bond with him because he's his brother or if he just wants to get close to him to get the inheritance. I feel like it's the latter right now, but I feel like the story is going to go in the direction of like a genuine bond. At least I hope so, man. I hope so. This must be like devastating for Raymond's routine, though. <sighs> this is so cute. I love his little head tilt, mostly because I also tilt my head and I notice it a lot when I like watch myself back or if I like see photos of myself. My head just like naturally sits a little bit more like. I like the focus on the sounds as if like we're Raymond and we're hearing what he's hearing. I like the focus on that. This, the humming, the tires going over the grates in the road, in the bridge. It's just a really nice touch. For room, all says, right. This is not my room. This is definitely not my room. It's just for tonight, right? Hey, I have room? to go back to Walburn. Whoa, 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 little guy, little guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Of course, I don't have my tapioca pudding. We have tapioca pudding for dessert. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, we can. Bed's in the wrong place. That's not, definitely not my bed. You don't like it there? You can move it. Why do you want the bed? It should, should be near the window. Big telephone book, huh? <sighs> no. Don't give him a telephone book. Oh, I'm nervous. Do they not hear or feel him? I think Raymond is in the room. What? Come on, Charlie, go what? in there. He's your brother. Why? He's afraid. He doesn't understand this. Come on. Go in there. You don't know what you were doing in my room. Of course, there were noises. There were noises. Well, those noises are none of your business. You understand that? Put the phone book down, stop acting like an idiot, and go to sleep. 
This is bullshit. I know it's not true. So why don't you tell me why is he, why is he here? Because I'm pissed at him. At all? Uh, at my father. You're pissed at your father and you bring Raymond here. Why? I don't know why, because I got him and they want him. This makes no sense. Raymond was left all the money and I got nothing. How much? Three million dollars the inheritance, every penny of it. So? So I'm going to keep him till I get my half. I deserve that. <sighs> what? You've had enough? What does that mean, you've had enough? I just had enough. I'm leaving. What is what? my crime here, huh? Your crime what is, is my you goddamn people. crime? You're your spoon, you're, you're I'm entitled getting, to that money, goddammit. You're getting up this man. I did not you take know. him. Yes, you did. I did not take him. I took my half. And what do you want from me? Oh, no, what do you want from out. me? Was that all done in one take? That was really good. I really hope that Charles has a good redemption arc in this movie. I'm, like, crossing my fingers majorly for that. So I do think that he is very selfish and uneducated about this uneducated about what Raymond goes through and deals with. I really hope he learns. I'm also curious if that was like Susanna, like ending the relationship with him, like for good, for good. Or if she just like left for like a break. Sally Gibbs, Gibbs, Sally. 4610-0192. How did you know my phone number? <laughs> Whoa. How did you know that? He did memorize. Oh my Sally. gosh. He memorized the whole damn telephone book. How'd you do that? I don't know. You memorize the whole book? No. You start from the beginning? Yeah. How far did you get? G. That's good, Ray. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. We hungry? Yeah. Tuesday we have pancakes. Pancakes? Well, yeah. That sounds good. We get some pancakes. maple syrup. Yeah, you bet your butt. Bet your butt. Of course, I, what is this, Ray? I, I, of course, I don't have my toothpicks. No. You don't need toothpicks. If he needs toothpicks, you give him toothpicks. N not going to have my, my, my pancakes with, with right. a wild, wild. Ow! Don't make a scene. Ow! Stop. Like a oh, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that so much. Serious injury yeah. list, Charlie Babbitt. Yeah. Serious injury yeah. list. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Not, not number, not, not, not number eighteen in nineteen eighty-eight. Squeezed and pulled and hurt my neck in nineteen eighty-eight. You have to bring him back, Mr. Babbitt. Do you understand me? It's no problem whatsoever. It'll be one point five million dollars. I'm not going to just want my head. Then I'll see you in court. Oh my God. Oh no. A2, A2, A2. Toothpicks. It's a lot more than two toothpicks, right? Plus 246 total. Keep the change. How many toothpicks are you? Um, 250. Pretty close. Come on, let's go, Ray. 246. There's four left in the box. Speedy counter. So Ray likes to repeat a lot. He's really good at memorizing. He loves baseball and he's really good with counting and numbers. From what I can tell, it seems like he logs a lot of his day, at least just based on like that serious injury list that he was writing in. I'm curious to see the rest of his book. I am in serious trouble here. I can't get to these cars. I can't get the money. So he's struggling a bit financially. No wonder he is so laser focused on the inheritance that he thinks he deserves. Everybody's boarding. Let's go. Their line travel is very dangerous. But don't be silly. It's the safest travel in the world. You're going to love this. Trust me. Yeah. Flying's very dangerous. 1987, there were 30 airline accidents. 211 were fatalities. And 231 were death in the passengers. Yeah, well, this plane is very safe. Believe yeah. me. Now, I got to get to LA and I don't have time for this shit. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I'm right? fine. I'm right? Is he really taking him to LA? What, is, it yeah. is, it, is it this airline? Yeah. Is it this airline? Okay, fine. Oh. We can, uh, there's, uh, there's an American plane. American Flight 625 crashed April 27th, 1976. Qantas. Qantas? Qantas never crashed. Qantas? Natty, you have got to get to Melbourne. And I are going to get on this fucking plane. Yeah, no, no. You cannot get physical with him. I'm not going to fly, okay? No flying. Charles is about to learn a lot about his brother. Both Tom and Dustin are doing an excellent job at playing these characters, though, I must say. Like, really good job. I'm enjoying both of their performances so far. I have a feeling, yeah, this isn't going to be good. Oh, dear. There's definitely a fatal accident over there. Oh, this is going to be so overwhelming for him, I feel. What's it going to be, Ray? What's it going to be? This is a very dangerous highway. How am I going to get to L.A.? Of course, driving a car on this interstate is very dangerous. Right. You want to get off the highway, Zach? Will that make you happy? Yeah. Yeah, well, you got to get in the car in course, order to get off the highway. Just stay in front of the car until we get off the exit. You'll get in and we'll take the not so dangerous road, whatever that might be. Give me five. Yeah, course, yeah, this guy's course, a yeah. fucking fruit cake. After all, a man earns it. Who does? Absolutely. Of course, of course, I have to be in bed by 11. Lights out at 11. 
all about the routine. And his routine is being completely shook. Oh, she's this boring. Is a good one. We don't go out when it rains. This is a real good one, Ray. I hope you appreciate this because my business is going on the fucking toilet. I should be in LA. I'm glad that Charles is like okay with his requirements, like not flying, getting off the interstate, staying here because it's raining. I don't want to give him like too much credit though, because he's still being an asshole. <laughs> I feel like the moment it stops raining, Charles is gonna be like, let's go. Ray, you take a shower, right? Yeah. Right? It's the same thing as the rain. You get a little wet. Of course, your shower's in the bathroom. It's kind of that conversation. Yeah, the shower is a different type of wet. Legally, Bruner never established a conservatorship of Raymond? Oh, he didn't figure anyone would show up to contest his authority. Well, if, hey, if that's the case, I definitely will get custody and the $3 million, right? Yeah, you set up a date for the custody hearing. Of course, I'm an excellent driver. You know how to drive? Yeah. When did you drive? Of course, I drove the Buick on the driveway when my dad came to Walbrook. Did he let you drive the Buick? Yeah, slow on the driveway. Well, we'll have to let you drive sometime. Raymond, Raymond, Raymond! Whoa. You never, yeah, never yeah. touch the steering wheel when I'm driving. Do you hear me? Yeah. Do you hear me? Of course, I don't have my underwear. What? I'm definitely not wearing my underwear. What are you talking about? I gave you a fresh pair of mine this morning. No, not my underwear. When we pass the store, we'll pick you up a pair of boxer course, shorts. I get my boxer shorts at Kmart in Cincinnati. It's Kmart. What are you, you hear me. I know you hear me. Yeah, my boxer shorts. Don't fool my... me with this shit for he a second. He hears, but he doesn't a two fully tight. understand. Did you fucking hear what I said? Oh, my gosh. Shut up! Kmart. Raymond, that is final. Did you hear me? I'm gonna be short. You know what I think, Ray? I think this autism is a bunch of shit. Cause you can't tell me that you're not in there somewhere. My, you're driving me crazy. Find a box of shorts. We're gonna have to make a little stop. Find a psychiatrist. Cause you're you driving me crazy. Okay. Good luck trying to find a shrink in this town. Is he really just going to call up a random psychiatrist in a random town on the way to L.A. to be like, hey, I need help with my autistic brother because I don't have patience. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Raymond! This isn't good. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Did he go get himself snacks? <laughs> oh, no. He's not gonna, he's not, oh, he's not gonna move. Hey, you! Hey, dipshit! Move it! Hey! Hey! Oh. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Okay. It's alright. Hey, Mark. Well, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do know that his brain doesn't work like other people. And what he does isn't intended to be annoying. If he's getting on your nerves, you just take a break. So you're telling me I just have to deal with this stuff? Is that it? I just, uh... That's literally it, yep. Out of curiosity, does he have any special abilities? Well, I mean, he's got a pretty good memory. He can uh, count toothpicks. Do you know how much 312 times 123 is? 38376. He's right. He's a genius. He's right. I mean, that is amazing. He should work for NASA or something like that. If you had a dollar and you spent 50 cents, how much money would you have left? That doesn't compute. About 70. 70 cents? 70 cents. So much for the NASA idea. Ray, do you know how much a candy bar costs? About $100. You know how much one of those new compact cars costs? About $100. In his particular case, he's pretty well off. He's very high functioning. Most autistics, they can't speak or they can't communicate. Do you know what autistic is? Yeah. You know that word? Yeah. Are you autistic? I don't think so. Definitely not. Also, it's interesting seeing a movie about autism made in the late 80s because I feel like what we know about autism has changed a lot since this time. Okay, that's, that's definitely my book. Well, taking your book is not serious injury. A serious in You're going to mess up his routine and rhythm with his book. Right now, you know why there's a party for you? Because you're the $3 million man. He doesn't understand what $3 million is. Where am I going to find a television room? Even if Walker. Got another farmhouse in sight. This is it, man. Are they just going up to a random farmhouse to be like, hey, can we borrow your TV? You mean the TV, right? Yes, ma'am, that's exactly it. Now, you've been selected as a preliminary candidate to become our next Nielsen family in the Tri-County area. Who's he? That, 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 that would be my partner, Mr. Bainbridge, who does the sample. It's finished. One minute to Wapner. One minute to Wapner, boy. What is going on out here? I'm sorry, ma'am, I like to. be up. If he doesn't get to watch people's corn in about 30 seconds, he's going to throw a fit right here in your porch. Now, you can help me, or you can stand there and watch it happen. Hmm, 
I wonder if he's keeping track of like the the show and the results in that book. I feel like he probably is. My credit card's been rejected, yes, sir. Here. How much is this gonna cost? Twenty dollars, sir. Is that twenty dollars for a room for one night? Oh man, the eighties or motel, I should say, not a hotel. I also wonder. It just occurred to me, like, does Ray? I don't know that Ray can comprehend that he's his brother. Because I mean, as much as Charles didn't know about Ray, that means Ray also didn't know about Charles, right? Yeah, huh? funny rain, yeah, funny teeth. What'd you say? Funny teeth. You rinse. Oh, I said funny rain men. Why'd you say funny teeth? You said funny teeth, funny rain man. Rain man? Yeah. I said rain man? Yeah, funny rain man. Was I trying to say Raymond and it came out rain man? Yeah, funny rain man. You? You're the rain man? Who took this shit? picture? T.A.D. Oh, you was that of the two of them? Yeah, 196, one beach across the street, Cincinnati, Ohio. When, uh, when, when, did, when did you leave? January 21st, 1965. You, you remember this? It's Thursday. Very snowy out. Is this just after Mom died, New Year's? Yeah, yeah Mom died January 5th, 1965. And you remember after. that day? You remember that day that you left? Short, short and sudden illness. But was I there? Where was I? Where, where, you, you, where, you, were, you were in the window. You, you waved to me. Bye-bye, Rain Man. Bye-bye, Rain, Rain Man. You were the one that sang to me? Yeah. What did you sing? What? She was just 17, and you know... What I mean. My god, I just got hit with emotion so hard. <laughs> so at the beginning of the movie, Charles said Rain Man was his imaginary friend, right? But he wasn't imaginary. He was real. He was your brother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I like it when you sing to me? Yeah. Do we sing any other songs? Do you like the Beatles? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, scary man. Oh, water. Hot water and baby. Water. Hot water and baby. Water. What baby? Me? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Come on, Bert. Yeah. It's okay. That's why I put you away. Thought you hurt me. Come on. It's eleven o'clock. Your lights out. Yeah. Never hurt John. This feels like a uh, pivotal moment in the movie and the story. I just want to hear it's not over. I mean, uh, I'm sc scared it's over. I'll call you when I get back, okay? I want to see the pictures that Ray is taking. I hope we get to see them at some point. I love the shot choices here because I feel like we are Ray's eyes like every time that this has happened. It's just a nice visual choice. I like it. You just don't want to listen to me, do you? You want to go back to Walbrook? Is that it? <sighs> There's like moments that I feel like Charlie's getting it and then he'll, he just goes right back to being the way he is. He's not understanding that he can hear you. He can hear the words you're saying, but there's no understanding there fully. Oh heck. That's 80,000, Charlie. 80,000. I don't have it. Son of a bitch! No, I don't want you to burn. All right. Now, how's that feel? Very slippery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get that. <clears throat> Sunscreen do be slippery. I love the choice of music in this movie. The different songs that have played. It's a nice, fun mix. Can you give me a break with this? Yeah. I just got a wave of nostalgia hearing that and seeing that. There was this restaurant we used to go to a long, long time ago that had those. And uh, my brother and I used to do that. J7. K7? What's that? J7. What's J7? The song that's playing. What's J7? The song? The song's J7? Yeah. Eighteen wheels and a dozen roses. What, what, uh, what's the number? E5. I see his cogs turning. Paying attention? Yeah. You seeing that, Ray? You catching that? Yeah, falling on yeah? the ground. What do I have left? Two jacks, one eight, one king, one six. Two aces, one ten, one nine, one five. One five. You are beautiful, man. Yeah. Great. He had an idea. 
are they gonna go gamble in vegas <laughs> and he's gonna use him to win eighty thousand dollars that's my guess i feel like that's what's about to happen that's good okay and you're gonna bet one one if it's bad two if it's good Okay, back to Vegas, <laughs> right into the casino. So now the question is, how well is this going to work? Because I feel like it could go either way. And I don't know that I necessarily want Charlie to win money because I feel like he has some hard life lessons to learn right about now with a bunch of different things. But uh, let's see how this goes. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Let's check out your fit, Ray. Oh, look at them. They look so sharp. Rain Man? Yeah. Let's play some cards. Yeah. You don't want to hit where you've got 18. You want to hit. So you have 18. Hit me, don't, hit. don't. You took my queen, Ray. I've got a 10. I needed that queen. I can't take Sir, your queen. There's lots of them. There's lots of them? Lots and lots of them. I'm going to double down. Queen. Queen. Yes. Yes, sir. I feel bad for Ray because he doesn't understand like what is happening or what's going on. Not that I think he's like upset currently or anything like that, but I just feel bad. Oh, I think the overstimulation's about to hit. And also none of this is in his routine. What's your secret, guys? You cheat. Oh no. <laughs> I got nervous all of a sudden. Well, he's not catching the whole card. He's not past posting this. I don't see him using a computer. He's not, but something's not right. You know there's no one in the world can count it to a six-deck shoot. Ray can. Ray's had enough. Watch my chips. I'm going to be back in a second. Go right ahead, sir. A little, uh, well, one for bad, two for good, yeah. huh? 20. 20? Yeah. You mean it's going to hit on 20? Yeah, 20. definitely 20. Uh, $3,000 on 20. Uh-oh. It's not your game, Ray. Yeah. I just lost $3,000. Yeah. Cash in, yeah, cash in. Make me sad, Ray. Right? Give me one eighty-six thousand dollars and some change, right, Ray? And we eighty-six thousand five. Eighty thousand dollars. I'm free and clear. I'm gonna go take a celebration kiss. Until I get back, the sign says, "Don't walk." Don't walk. I am nervous. Please don't take advantage of him. I just got that kind of feeling. You looking for a day? Oh my God. What's your name? Raymond. My name is Iris Raymond. You like me? I, I don't know. He doesn't yeah. have any money, honey. Well, that's all right, sugar, because we are just talking. Yeah, we're just talking. Let's go upstairs, Ray. What are you doing, man? Getting, getting to know each other. Uh -huh. Just talking. What room? I'll bring him up. That's all right. What exactly do you guys do here? We're counting cards. What else do you do? Are you taking any prescription medication? <laughs> Whoa, I'm out of here. Of course, what time is the date? Later. What time is it day? It's 10 o'clock. Because I have to be in bed at 11. Lights out at 11. Okay. I'm glad that nothing bad happened. I was very nervous. <laughs> How can you not like that suit? It's not a Kmart suit. Let me let you know a little secret. Ray right? loves yeah. Kmart. Kmart sucks. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't think he understands what Kmart sucks means, so that's good. This is for you. Huh? You ever seen a room like this before? Yeah. What's up there? What's up there? Charlie... Ray does not care about the glamorous, as long as his routine is met. He doesn't care about the flashy lights and the glamour and the rich. Doesn't understand. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, you know, I got a little carried away. Got a little hot, okay, Ray? Yeah. Wow, apologizing, damn. Wanna say something? I have to be at the bar at 10 o'clock with Ivy. I mean, because, you know, I gotta thank you, man. You, uh, you did it. You did it. I, I was just there. Come over here. Yeah. Now, you hear the music? Yeah. Just watch my feet. Feel the rhythm of the music? We're just moving our feet like that? Now, you're the guy, so you're gonna have to lead, all right? And I'm the date, so you want to uh, put your left hand up like this. Raymond, don't stop moving. Now, you wanna take this other hand, you wanna put it around behind my back, right? Now, when you dance, you can't watch my feet the whole time, so you're gonna have to look up. There you go, Ray. Yeah. You're dancing. This yeah. is it. Yeah, dancing. This is really cute. Look at them, still dancing. We love to see it. You want to give me a hug? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ah! Again, he doesn't understand the questions. I just wanted to give you a hug, Ray. I... I'm uh, glad to see you. Surprised she came back. I was expecting her to, like, I don't know, just be broken up for good, I guess. 
but maybe she's still like been sitting about it. Guess we'll find out. Six months to my day. Six months to Iris. So how is this gonna work? Are they gonna find Iris? She's very sparkly. She looks like a holiday. I love that description. Uh, Mr. Kelso would like to see you. Uh-oh. I don't know, Mr. Kelso. Oh, he's director of security. Uh, would you come with me, please? Sure. Listen, Susanna, why don't you stay with Raymond? Right this way. Counting into a six-deck shoe is quite a feat. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're talking about. Now, these tapes suggest that you should take your winnings and leave the state. All you have to do is close your mouth and go home. And those are the best odds you're going to see for a while. Well, that's not how I was expecting the conversation to go at all. Did you want to dance on your day three? Yeah. Uh, you, you think you could show me the way you're going to dance with Iris? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. All right. I got bad vibes. I got really bad vibes. Charlie Babbitt talking. Charlie Babbitt? Yeah. It's nice. I, like, want to assume it's a wholesome moment, but... Iris missed a beautiful dance. And the kiss. Yeah, and kiss. Have you ever kissed a girl? I don't know. Open your mouth. Close your eyes. It's okay, right? Yeah. <sighs> How was that? Wet. <laughs> and we did it right. The elevator's definitely stuck. No, it's not stuck. I think the thing that she fails to realize is like, he can easily repeat this and talk about it. And how is that going to go over with Charlie? Not good because like he can't he can't properly consent. So that was not OK. I don't feel good about that scene. Oh, he's driving. <laughs> well, sort of driving. <laughs> he has help. <laughs> All right. I love this, though. I actually really like this. So I'll wait to hear from you after Raymond's meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot they still have this custody meeting. But I feel like Charlie is going to actually want custody. Thank you for the gate in the elevator. It was really nice. Yeah. Something between us. Between us? Between us. Your brother's a great disabled individual. Are you trying to tell me that Marston's going to rule against me? Is that why you called me up here? No, I'm telling you it's always been a lost cause, Charlie. Well, let me tell you something. Your father put me in charge of all the money, all right? And it doesn't matter whether or not you in custody of Raymond. I won't have to pay you a dime. It's at my discretion, not the court's. What, so you can't lose? I can lose Raymond. I happen to care about your brother's life and the treatment he receives. I made a commitment to your father some 20 years ago, and I'm not willing to, to gamble with that. What is this? It's a very big check. For the half? $250,000. Oh. And no strings attached. Just walk away, Charlie. You know, I asked you a week ago, why didn't anyone ever tell me I had a brother? You didn't have an answer. It's funny, I just realized I'm not pissed off anymore. My father cut me out of his will. Brother, why didn't anyone ever tell me that I had a brother? Because it'd been nice to know him for more than just the past six days. Uh, is he here by himself? Oh no, great, this is not good. Oh, never mind, he's not here by himself. All right, what is Charlie thinking? Yeah, well, what kind? Pancake. Of course. Of course, maple syrup is supposed to be on the table before the pancake. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Ta-da. Ha, ha, ha. Charlie Babbitt made a joke. <laughs> I feel like we don't have much of the movie left. Genuinely do not know how this is going to end. I'm sure there's a good ending. Raymond's case has been meticulously documented over the years, and of course, Walbrook is one of the finest institutions we have in this country. Well, you guys have already made up your mind. I'll see you in court, huh? What did you do, Raymond? Count of cards. Count of cards? Count of cards in Las Vegas. What else did you do? Dance with Charlie Babbitt. Kiss Susanna. Kiss Susanna? Yeah, in the elevator. Did you enjoy kissing a woman? I don't know. How did it feel? Th that felt wet. Wet? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Did you enjoy being on the road? I'm an excellent driver. You drove? Yeah. Rather let you drive on the highway, the interstate? Yeah, slow on the driveway. He didn't drive on the highway. Uh -huh. Did he have any emotional outbursts this past week? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, a couple of times. A couple of times? I, I, I mean, this is bullshit because I uh -huh. can tell you, I, I could tell you anything, I could tell you nothing, and you, you, you'd never know the difference. Well, I don't... I mean, this morning the smoke alarm went off. And he mm -hmm. got a little nervous, but he's fine. He well, no, don't, don't, uh, don't I mean, feel as I'm placing any now. blame. Just having a conversation. <laughs> well, I think you're missing the point. No, I think you're missing the point. I'm being truthful. No one is saying anything, I, and there's no need to be that. I didn't hurt about him. That. He's not hurting me. We're not hurting you. Now, why are you interfering? This is my family. Just listen. Look, you cannot take on the responsibility of your brother without professional guidance. That's your opinion, Dr. Berger. Yes, it's my opinion. 
Okay, I, okay. that was wrong. So last week you were upset, and then this week you suddenly found some devotion to your brother, and you want to take care of him for the rest of your life. Yes. Uh-huh. And when we started out together, that he was only my brother in name. And as... And this morning we had pancakes. And Charlie Babbitt made a joke. I made a connection. I think it's very admirable that you made a connection, but I think the purpose of this meeting is to determine what is best for Raymond and what, in fact, he wants, if that's possible to determine. Raymond's unable to make those kind of decisions. You're wrong. Charlie, you know he can't decide for himself. He's capable of a lot more than you know. Why don't we ask Raymond, maybe we can find a few answers. Raymond, can I ask you a few questions? Raymond, do you want to stay with your brother, Charlie? Raymond, do you want to stay with your brother, Charlie? Yeah. You do? Yeah. You want to stay with your brother? Yeah. Yeah, stay with my brother, Charlie Babbitt. That's what you want? Yeah. You want to go back to Walbrook? Yeah. Can you make a distinction between your brother and Walbrook? Yeah, Charlie. No, 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 okay. it's just everything. Uh, Can you make look, that choice, yeah, one right. or the other? Yeah, go back to Walbrook. Stay all back to right, Walbrook. All right, all right. Stay back, back to no, Walbrook. All right, all right, all right, all right. Major point, okay? You, you don't have to humiliate him. Okay, Ray. Yeah. No worries, there's not going to be any more questions, okay? Yeah. No more questions, I'll make sure of that, okay, Yeah, Ray? main man. What? I main man. Dr. Bruner really likes you a lot, and he's probably going to want to take you back with him. But I just want you to know that what I said about being on the road with you, I meant connecting. I like having you for my brother. I'm an excellent driver. Oh, I feel the emotions again. This is very sweet. I like having you for my big brother. Yeah. C-H-A-R-L-I-E. C-H-A-R-L-I-E. Oh, oh, that was my favorite scene so far, was what we just watched. Yep, that was my favorite so far. You should feel a little more relaxed in your favorite Kmart clothes. Tell him, Ray. Kmart sucks. <laughs> I see. Why don't you take a couple of minutes? See you, Charlie. <laughs> that was awesome. Joke, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm coming to see you in two weeks. 14 huh? days from today. Today's Wednesday. Hours? 336 hours, which has 20,160 minutes, or 1,209,600 seconds. Ray! Right. Ray, right. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Yeah. One for bad, two for good. Bad, two for good. Yeah. I think this is the right call. Ray thrives in his routine, and he's able to visit him, like, whenever, right? He can go as much as he likes. And we are done. And that's the movie. Friends, stick around for my full thoughts and review of Rain Man. All right, so before I dive into my thoughts about Rain Man and what we just watched, I do just wanna talk about my experience with autism and what I know about it. I will be the first to admit that my understanding with autism is definitely not strong, and my experience with autistic folk is not a lot. I do know that nobody is going to have autism exactly the same way. Currently, I do have a couple of folks in my life that have autism, however, it is very different from what we saw portrayed in this film. The people that have it have emotional regulation, they're able to understand things, they're able to carry on conversations no problem, they're not intellectually disabled, etc. But they are obviously still neurodivergent and they have been formally diagnosed with autism. Like I said in the movie, our understanding of autism has come so far in the past three decades since this film came out. And a lot of autism today is not something that reflects visually. I think that with a lot of folks with autism, it would take you a lot of time to either notice or maybe you wouldn't even notice at all and you would rely on them telling you that they have autism. I guarantee that all of us have had some wonderful conversations over the years with folks that have autism. The only time in my life that I've been around an autistic person that is similar to how Ray was in this film was back when I was in fifth grade. There was a girl in my class that had autism and what I remember of her is that she was ridiculously talented artistically. Her drawings, her paintings were amazing. I was a huge artist back then and I also loved drawing and I just remember connecting with her over that because her art was amazing and I remember being like, teach me, you're so good. <laughs> I also remember that she didn't have a ton of emotional regulation. I remember that she would have outbursts very similar to what Ray did in this film 
Uh, she had an intellectual disability and she couldn't communicate super well. And now that I'm recalling this and thinking back to it, it's very interesting to me that she was placed in my class and that she wasn't put into an environment where she could thrive a bit better. I attended public school my whole life and I feel like our school would have been equipped to have like an area where kids with learning disabilities could go and thrive in instead of being just plopped into a regular classroom. I am of the firm belief that school as we know it is not a good environment for neurodivergent folks. And honestly, I would argue that it's not a good environment for neurotypical folks either. Anyway, that kind of covers just my overall like thoughts and experience about autism itself. So let's talk about Rain Man. I really enjoyed this movie. I totally understand why it gets recommended a lot. I understand why it was the top grossing film of its year. I understand why it won awards. I understand why Dustin Hoffman won Best Actor, I think, or was it Best Supporting Actor, one of the two. I had no idea that this movie was going to involve autism. I just never would have predicted that based on the title alone. And speaking of the title, definitely a top scene for me was Charlie realizing that Ray was his Rain Man and was not an imaginary friend. That was very touching. I really enjoyed and appreciated how this film was shot. I know I mentioned it during the reaction, but I loved how a lot of the shots that we saw were, at least the way that I saw it, was intended to kind of place us into Ray's head and eyeballs and kind of show us what he was looking at and what he was seeing. And then on the flip side too, sound design. I loved the scenes where the sounds of things were just really focused again, as if we were Ray and in his ears and hearing what he was hearing and focusing on. The song choices throughout this movie were excellent and Hans Zimmer, the song that he created for this film, I never would have known that that was Hans Zimmer if not for the fact that his name was displayed on screen in the opening credits because I only know Nolan Hans Zimmer, <laughs> which is a very different sound from what we heard in this movie. I do really like it though. I think that it was very fitting. It was very late 80s. It was just such a, it was just such an 80s sound. So big props to Hans Zimmer for that. I also think the song really fit with the cinematography as well. At least the scenes that that song was playing. I just thought everything tied together really well. When it comes to the acting, I think that Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman did a phenomenal job as their characters. I was curious about Dustin's preparation for his role as Raymond. So I did go to the Wikipedia and I read about how long Dustin prepared for this role, like starting pretty much a year out, which is awesome. I love that he surrounded himself with autistic folks so that he could learn about behaviors and mannerisms and speech and everything to just do his best job to, to portray someone that does have autism. I just love that he took the time and care to make it right or as right as you can make it considering that autism doesn't always look the exact same way for everybody. I did read about how this movie unfortunately made people think that everyone with autism had like a supersonic ability to do crazy math in seconds and memorize things etc etc called savant syndrome. Obviously we all know that that is just not the case. Tom Cruise as Charlie was wonderful. I think that he definitely sold the greedy asshole, the selfish personality to a T. He did a really good job with showing frustration, impatience, and just overall intolerance. I think it was so well done that it had me frustrated a lot as I was watching. I just think that Tom and Dustin's chemistry together as actors in their roles was just really good. There was some really good scenes in this movie, scenes that will live in my head rent free until I'm dead. I genuinely couldn't picture any other actors in these roles. So as for the characters themselves and the overall story, let's talk about Charlie. I don't think that he fully redeemed himself by the end of this. And I don't think he necessarily had to either. Like obviously the story as portrayed in this film ended where it did, but I mean, we could easily ourselves carry the story out past that and picture Ray and Charlie and their relationship after this movie, right? I'm sure that if that had been portrayed at all, like we would see Charlie truly redeem himself and become like a genuinely good person. But the thing is, is when someone is selfish like he was, has that greedy personality, is very money hungry, it's not a switch that can be turned off immediately. I feel like no matter how much of a shock happens to you in your life, obviously in this film, that showed with the whole casino scene, right? It pains me that Charlie took advantage of that and got Ray to win him $80,000 when Ray had literally no understanding of what he was doing or what was going on to him. He was just counting cards. 
kids and that was it. But that whole thing is something that Charlie and someone with Charlie's personality would do and they would think it's fine. Charlie was definitely an asshole, impatient a lot, frustrated easily, but at the same time, I don't think you can fully blame him. We have to remember that he did not know of Ray's existence for his entire life up until whatever age he is in this film. And then all of a sudden, his dad passes away and then he immediately finds out that he has a brother that he's never known about. And then he finds out that brother has been in a mental institution and has autism and is the way he is. And clearly Charlie has never dealt with that before. It's going to take a lot longer than a week, not just to fully understand autism and how it works, but to actually know Ray and know how Ray's autism is, because again, it's not the exact same as anyone else's. I definitely don't blame Susanna for dropping Charlie when she saw how Charlie treated him, although it's weird to me because I feel like, so what, they'd been together a year. I feel like Charlie's personality definitely like happened during that year. So it surprises me that she wouldn't have dropped him sooner and that how he was treating his brother was like the final straw for her. But maybe there had been cases where they had argued and whatever. This is going down a wormhole that like we don't have time to go down, but I'm just saying like, I don't blame her for doing what she did. She could have probably done that a lot sooner and this was just like that final straw. Of course, I love and appreciate that throughout this film we had really good moments. Even with Charlie resisting and getting frustrated and arguing with Ray about his very particular schedule and routine, at the end of the day, he still adjusted the plan to accommodate for that. And that does show a little bit of care in Charlie. It's nice that Charlie's not the kind of person that would literally abandon him. <laughs> like it was cool to see that he did adhere to all of it, even though it like significantly impacted what was going on and ended up getting to the point where it affected Charlie and his situation with his business and all of that. Obviously the bathroom scene where we find out that Ray has these very strong memories of Charlie and that they actually had lived together at one point and then finding out the whole backstory of the meaning behind Rain Man and why Ray ended up getting getting sent away is a top scene and also very heartbreaking. Definitely not a good look on the father there. I think my favorite moment of that bathroom scene was the end where Ray patted Charlie's head. I thought that was very, very cute. And then just after that was the moment where Charlie walks over to Ray and takes off his slippers to prepare him for bed. I thought that was just like a really nice touching moment. The conversation they had after the whole custody meeting where Ray leaned over and touched his forehead to Charlie's. I also thought was a, just a really lovely moment. I think my favorite line in the entire movie was Ray spelling out Charlie followed by main man. I just, I love that. <laughs> At the end of the movie, I very much appreciated and was glad that Ray was going back to Walbrook to be back in his structured routine and his schedule with supervision by professionals. I think that's the best case scenario. Let Charlie live his life. Charlie can go visit with Ray every two weeks or every month or whatever the arrangement ends up being. I do think that is the best case scenario for both of them. The one character that I have mega mixed feelings about is Susanna. First half of the movie, I'm like, yeah, you go girl. You don't deserve Charlie. He's a fucking asshole. Don't be with him. See how he treats his brother. See how greedy he is. See how selfish he is. Blah, 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 blah. Right. But then that elevator scene, that elevator scene completely changed my opinion of her. I feel like a bunch of people might see that scene as not a big deal, not a bad thing. I am. I don't share that at all. Nope. I don't. To me, she had been around him long enough to know that he cannot properly understand situational stuff, what is going on. He cannot properly communicate his emotions or thoughts. And ultimately that means that he has no way of like properly giving consent. Definitely in a situation like that, he would not be able to because he doesn't, he doesn't understand what's happening. It really bothers me that she like had that idea and elected to do that in a fucking elevator and like actually stopped it. Like that just to me feels like a very trapped situation. And even though we hear Ray say the word yeah a few times, we obviously know that that doesn't necessarily mean that he is agreeing and giving consent, right? We know from so many scenes that that is kind of just a general response that he gives similar to, I don't know. We obviously see that displayed very clearly in that later scene in the custody moment where they were asking him, do you want to go with your brother to LA or do you want to go back to Walbrook? And he just said, yeah, repeatedly to both options. However, if I am totally missing the mark with that scene and what I just said is not how you see it, like feel free to share how you interpret that scene in the comments. Please do it respectfully. Of course, um, don't bash me for 
how I'm thinking about it, but to me, that is just how that scene reads out. And it's heartbreaking for me because I feel like a lot of disabled folks get taken advantage, adva advantage of like that from neurotypical people because the neurotypical person obviously understands exactly what's going on and what's happening and intellectually disabled folks do not. So, all right. The last thing I have to say is about Dustin Hoffman movies. So, um, this was my second movie with Dustin Hoffman. The only one I've seen prior to this was Meet the Fockers, but that was so long ago that I don't fully remember the movie exactly. So I'm kind of almost going to consider this my first Dustin Hoffman movie. I know he's been in a ton. If you all think that there's other Dustin Hoffman movies that I should watch, feel free to suggest them using my movie suggestion form, which is linked in the description. Maybe one of his movies will show up in a poll one day. All right, the only thing I have left to say is an overall reading. So I think this movie for me is a four out of five stars. I would definitely rewatch it in the future. I definitely enjoyed it. And I'm really happy to say that I finally watched it and can add it to the watch list. So now that I have shared my thoughts and feelings about watching Rain Man for the first time. I would love to know what you think about this movie. Do you love it? Why do you love it? Do you not like it? Why do you not like it? I would love to know what you think in the comments below. Just please remember to keep things respectful. And with that, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video with me. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please click here to do so so that you don't miss out on future movie reactions. And if you want to keep on watching, click over here. And with that, I will wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Take care, everyone.